Yeah, so in this exercise, you basically start by relaxing back in your hip, right? Uh, put a little bit of pressure down on the club, and then you basically drive through and try to extend that hip. Create this, this middle line, balance on the right hip, and just make sure it works. If you do it properly, you should feel a stretch on the hip while you're pressing down on the club, and you will feel that connection basically from your right shoulder all the way down to your right knee. Mm -hmm. And then you relax and keep that pressure on. Do it for maybe two seconds, maybe like five reps each side, and that should be enough. Now notice how we're working on what we call the rack and stack, right? John's racking it up and he's stacking it straight up. The one thing we don't want to see is for him to be wee and be back here. <laughs> Again, and all the previous warm up is going to help, right? If you have all your core activated and working properly, you're not going to lose your back. Your abs are going to stay in there and make you just, you know, feel like a straight plank. <laughs> this right here really helps him lock his midline in. The one thing we don't want is that reverse spine angle or the early extension. So John's gonna really focus creating pressure with his top hand, with his lat. He's really pushing down right here and compressing the lower leg, breathing in, and he's trying to get as long as he can without losing that midline. So as it come in, breathe in, and breathe out. I should be able to touch right here, and he shouldn't be able to lose it. So notice the pressure he's putting into. It's a lot of pressure, really working that compression force as we work and we're at impact. It's a uh it's very important to keep that pressure. You know, if you lose it, this arm is gonna get loose. You might arch your back. If you keep this pressure continuously going throughout the whole exercise, it's very hard to arch it. Mm -hmm. Especially if you use that hip and push into the hand. Yeah. So now, RDLs. Uh, not my favorite exercise. This is gonna be, it's hard to keep balance throughout doing them for most people. Uh, I struggle if I don't warm up properly or if I don't do anything for a week. Yeah. So. Basically, you try to keep your arm extended, keep that pressure, put your toes, your toes up, keep that pressure between the legs, between the leg and the arm, and basically do a normal RDL. Try to go to parallel if you can, if you can, whatever you get to, but never lose that, never lose that, that pressure between your arm and your leg. Maybe John becomes a coach his next profession. <laughs> Highly doubt it. But you notice he's really working those feet. So when you think of that bottom foot, when you're going down, you're gripping those toes in the ground to anchor that foot down. This will help their sway and slide in our golf swing. All right, so the last thing we're gonna work on is a little two-legged hip hinge to get us ready to swing the golf club. So for people that know, it's almost like preset to a deadlift. <laughs> but try to keep your elbows open, not close like this. Try to keep them open and try to keep the club touching your body as much as possible and just hinge. And what we're, what we're looking for is can John keep his head, shoulder blades, and glutes all connected to the club as he's putting force on the ground and loading those hips. Now notice how his shin angle is staying nice and vertical. He's not going backwards where he's losing power. He's not going too much farther than that squat. Now this is a challenging pattern. It looks simple, but it's way more challenging than you think. Try, try switching hands as well. And I would say as soon as you feel the club leaving your body, so like you see if I start bending my upper body without hinging, you'll see the bottom of the club and the grip will not be touching my, my spine. That's, you're already wrong. So try mm -hmm. to keep that butt pushing as much as possible until you feel the separation and then is when you stop.